Hey guys, Jay here, and today in this video, I want to talk just a little bit about mana stacking. Uh, you know, mainly focusing on the not too obvious things that you can do. Of course, I will go through a little bit of the changes with uh, mana stacking that would change things up uh, quite a lot. In this league, that will make uh, mana stacking, in my opinion, will be like, first of all, very strong as a league starter. And also, a lot of people is going to play it because probably you'll see uh, quite a few of the content creators are touching on this uh, build. Uh, it got massively changed. First of all, the, the, the most important change is uh, with the Archmage. So before the damage, basically, the Archmage, uh, the Archmage gem still gives you flat lightning damage based on the mana. Before 3.24, uh, which is the next leak, it is uh, the damage is calculated based on the cost of the skill itself when you cast. So the higher the cost, the more damage you will gain for the skill, uh, lightning damage. But after uh, the next patch, which is 3.24, Necropolis leak, you will have a complete different Archmage gem that is, in my opinion, much, much easier and more, you know, newbie friendly and also kind of low investment friendly as well. Because the, the Archmage now doesn't care about your skill cost. The skill can cost zero mana, can cost a hundred, a thousand mana. It is the same. It only care about how much mana that you have unreserved. So, for example, if you have uh, 10,000 mana, for example, with the Archmage gem at level 21, which is the maximum level you can get on a gem corrupted, you will have 20% of that added as flat lightning damage. And so that means 2000 flat lightning damage, which is a huge number. If you reserve 50% uh, of that, you only have 5000 mana uh, left, it will become only 1000 mana. So that is the basic of the Archmage after, this, after the change. Uh, so the obvious thing, if you have a lot of flat damage added, is actually to care about the added damage effectiveness of the spells, right? So this is like a list of the couple of, uh, skills that have the highest uh, damage effectiveness. Uh, if I move my face out of the way here, oh shit, one second. If I move my face out of the way here, you will see that... Uh, there are a couple of skills that have a lot of damage effectiveness. For example, let's say we say uh, Discharge as a um, example here. 600%, so in our sample uh, that I made before, we have 10,000 mana, so that is 2,000 flat mana, uh, 2,000 flat lightning damage added to the spell. 600% mean your base damage goes up by six times of two thousands basically so it is uh, twelve thousand flat damage just from the get-go that is a huge huge amount of damage so uh, in this case even if you have like one charge you discharge you still deals like a ton of lightning damage and that is just an example I don't think that is going to be something that is very useful mechanically but that is just an example and there's one thing I want to mention quickly, the Archmage, as you can see here, it does not work with Bran or Orbs. And also, before the, the, the uh, 3.24, the Archmage also doesn't work with Vow Skill. Uh, I believe that it will still be the same, it, just, it will not work with Vow Skill. But if it does, then there will be something pretty crazy uh, that can do with Vow Skill and Archmage. So I don't think that it is going to be the case. Just want to mention it out there in case for some reason when uh, GG reworked the Archmage, they forgot to you know uh, set the behavior correctly with Vow Skill. Um, so um, this is very very obvious way. So normally when people try to look for a skill that works well for Archmage, they will look for high number of damage effectiveness. But actually, there are two skills that are extremely, extremely high effectiveness, but it doesn't show as the damage effectiveness number. So I want to mention uh, Volatile Death of Seething and Detonate Death of Chain Reaction. 
So the volatile test of seething is 170%. It's not as impressive as any other skills that you can see here, uh, even though not all these skills works with the Archmage. But the thing that makes these two special, the detonated dead of chain reaction doesn't even have the effectiveness of damage added. Uh, number as you can see like on the volatile death here because if you don't see that line it means it is a hundred percent so for example if you have an uh, archmage linked to these you uh with uh, ten thousand mana you will have a uh, two thousand flat damage lightning added to the tonic dead of chain reaction and also uh for volatile death of c thing you will have a two thousand times uh one point seven is gonna be three 3,400 flat damage added to full attack death of seething. So that is not a high effectiveness, but mechanically those two skills are very special. Volatile death of seething does not only deals damage once with a cast. With a single cast, volatile death of seething actually creates 10 orbs, which is 10 different instances of damage, which applies these 170% uh, effectiveness 10 times in one single cast uh, there is a drawback that if you uh, if those uh, volatile death orbs explode uh, then you can cr create new volatile death uh, volatile death orb uh, so it will deal damage but if you overcast it for example if the the, the first cast you create 10 orbs it does not uh, explode and deal damage to the enemy yet if you cast a second one you basically lose out on all the things that you have casted before so volatile death of seething although uh, numerically mathematically it might be a huge amount of uh, effectiveness of uh, uh, it's like 11, 11 uh, I know I mean 1700 uh, percent of effectiveness added damage for one cast but because the mechanic of the skill doesn't work really well with continuously casting, so it might only work for some certain playstyle that you do not cast very often. And you wait for the orbs to explode and then you cast again. It is still very, very good with Archmage, I believe, because it's just a very insane number, right? Next one, Detonate Dead and Chain Reaction. This is more straightforward. So as long as you can cast the Detonate Dead of Chain Reaction and you can supply enough corpses for the detonated chain reaction then each cast is 10 explosion and each explosion is a hundred percent of the flat added damage from archmage so each cast of the detonated chain reaction and uh, ends up being uh, a thousand percent of uh, damage effectiveness which is way higher than anything in the list that you will see up here and in the list here, Vow Firestorm is a Vow skill, probably not work. Discharge has a cooldown, so whatever. Penance Brand uh, is a Brand skill, so it doesn't work. Vow Reap is a Vow skill, yada yada. So you can see the damage effectiveness of all these skills that has very high damage effectiveness normally kind of have some drawback that it doesn't work really well with Archmage. Uh, most of the skill that is optimal and very nice for Archmage use are like around 300% effectiveness like uh, Lightning Conduit of Heaven uh, is a very nice AoE skill but it have a uh, lower damage effectiveness or maybe Spark for example can be very nice because Spark uh, have I think the Spark of un unreliability or something unpredictability or something it, it has like 190% damage effectiveness but any skill that can hit multiple times with the same cast normally works pretty well with Archmage, not just high effectiveness of uh, the, not just the number of damage effectiveness here. So detonate that chain reaction, as long as you can supply the courses, you can cast as much as you can and each explosion will deal 100% of the flat added damage for Archmage. So that can potentially be pretty crazy, pretty, pretty crazy. Right, uh, one idea that I have seen, uh, that is using the Kitava's Thirst, which is the helmet that uh, when you cast a spell, you have 50% chance to cast socketed spell in the Kitava's helmet, uh, which uh, you maybe can cast, like, for example, you use Unearth, uh, which is a very fast casting, casting uh, skill, 
and you linked the unearth with Archmage. So the unearth mana is just need to be over a hundred mana because uh, the Kitava's thirst required you to have uh, more than a hundred mana cost on the cast to be able to trigger the effect of the helmet. And you have detonate that chain reaction in the helmet. Each cast of uh, unearth, if you link to GMP or um, of Rate of Volley, you will have five courses. Two casts, you have ten courses. So mathematically, 50% chance to proc. Every two casts, you will cast one detonate dead chain reaction. So every ten corpses you create, you create one detonate dead chain reaction. So that perfectly, you know, worked out. So you just continuously supply the corpses, uh, supply the number of corpses with your unearth, and then the detonate dead chain reaction. Just keep on, you know stacking up the damage basically and it can deal a huge amount of damage the problem is the cost right so uh, yeah the cost is something that is very crazy if you cast a skill that is that costs that much mana and then also rapidly so yeah maybe something someone will work out some crazy idea or have some very very good solution to that and make that a very insane build but uh, yeah, that's just want to throw it out there. Uh, one thing that normally are tied to just mana stacking build is uh, arcane cloak mana stacking build before three point twenty four and probably after three point twenty four as well uh, are revolving around using archmage. But from the update three point twenty four, the archmage gem doesn't work with orbs and brand. But some of the skills, uh, some of the effect, normally only used along with Archmage, are actually you know work differently right now. For example, we have Arcane Cloak and we have the Mana Storm Shield, which is an item that got like reworked in this uh, coming patch. So basically, mechanically, those two skills work. Uh, those two things here on the screen works basically the same. You spend mana using Arcane Cloak or the effect of Mana Storm. You spend the mana and then a percentage of that mana spent got converted into added uh, lightning damage to your skill. Why is this different from the Archmage? Well, because these two effects actually does not care about the skill that you use. So you can actually use Orb skills. And brand skill as well, but in this case, I want to especially mention orbs because uh, I think that these two skills can potentially work really well with uh, with the the cremation of the volcano. Uh -huh. yeah. It can work really well with the cremation of the volcano, uh, which you can create uh, six geyser at a time. And they will continuously shoot out projectiles every second. Six of them create six, basically at least six hits per second on one target. Because if you have enough AOE, they can't even overlap. Uh, I have not played with it that much, so I am not sure what is a sweet spot for you know overlapping. But mechanically, they can overlap because they create the projectiles that hit the ground and explode in an AOE. So uh, when you snapshot the damage. You have the added damage from Arcane Cloak, from Mana Storm, and uh, then you use uh, Cremation of Volcano, or the skill below, the new skill, Tornado Elemental Turbulence. Uh, it will last for a duration, so even if the added damage effect from Mana Storm or Arcane Cloak technically went off, if the skill is still cast before the duration of the mana uh, of the damage added went off, then it will still have the full effect of the of the uh, added damage, basically. So, for example, if you have ten thousand mana again, again, that is a, a number that is you know first of all achievable, and second of all very easy to calculate. So I use that as an example, and let's use mana storm here. So when you cast any spell, let's say you cast, uh, let's say you just cast uh, Tornado uh, Elemental Turbulence here, then you have flat added maximum lightning damage of 5,000. Why maximum is important? Uh, well, because uh, 
maximum damage only means you do like one to five thousand instead of in the case of arcane cloak you gain the mana spend as added lightning damage not maximum so the minimum and maximum damage there is equal to each other so that is very consistent mana storm is one to five thousand so basically on average is uh Two thousand and five hundred damage. That means in the next four seconds of when you first cast your tornado, and I believe it includes the original tornado that you cast as well. Uh, it will add a flat one to five thousand uh, lightning damage to the tornado for the whole duration of the tornado itself. So if you scale, for example, if you don't even scale the tornado elemental turbulence here, by the end of this effect. Uh, which lasts four seconds you cast a tornado if the effect of the added damage is still there you still have a um, you know big boy tornado with a lot of flat lightning damage added to it so technically even though it is an orb skill and mechanically it should works really really well with uh, archmage ggg kind of prevent us from using that with archmage but effect from mana storm from arcane cloak if you build a mana stacking character you totally totally can still benefit from it with skills like cremation of volcano a tornado of elemental turbulence things that can come in mind for me is like a uh, voice sphere is an orb uh, storm or a storm is an orb um, hydrosphere is an orb and uh, maybe other brand skills you cast them once and then you recall them so you have a whole duration of big big boy added damage basically so because mechanically normally before it works really go it works really well with uh, Archmage because you have the damage for the whole duration so with this rework GG removed it from the Archmage gem itself but because they add these two uh, um, I mean they leave the arcane cloak as it is and then they fix uh, and then they rework the mana storm but mechanically they still work with orb skill brand skills and any skill basically so you can still abuse this one for a mana stacking character that can have a lot a lot of damage added to skill with a long duration so you cast one time you don't have to spend a lot of mana but you gain the whole benefit of you know mana stacking right so that is everything I want to talk about today. One quick mention for anyone who wants to try it out or like make their own build for mana stacking. Hierophant is a very obvious choice, but also Ascendant is decently good because you can get the Hierophant Ascendant Ascendancy, which gives you some mana and have some synergy there as well. The, um, damage taken as mana before health, uh, I think 8%. And also Elementalist. Elementalist uh, have uh, something special, even though it doesn't really give you any maximum mana compared to the two other Ascendancy, but it has a node that gives you, uh, first of all, more exposure, which is extremely strong, but in the same node, it gives you one uh, it gives you a flat 1% mana regen per second, which can be scaled with um, percentage increased mana regeneration rate. So that is very nice for mana recovery because for example, if I want to come back to the previous slide, uh, to the previous screen one, one, one time, just to explain a little bit. For example, if you play with Mana Storm, you spend all your mana, right? So you have the full damage for four seconds. So after that four second, you would want to some way, somehow recover all your mana so you can spend them all again and get the full effect of the added damage so yeah basically that is how it works so that is why elementalist is actually a pretty nice choice for uh, mana stacking as well and so that's everything thanks for watching remember to like and subscribe to the channel it will help me greatly i am very close to a thousand subscriber and that will be a very very huge huge milestone for me i cannot tell you guys how much i appreciate the support so far and uh, you know i will say i cannot promise anything but i'll give everything making the content in poe for you guys and yeah subscribe subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video peace